che musica suonavano i gong? Il gong è più rock band, I'll say, you know, progressive or psychedelic as you like, but it's still, you know, it's a, still a rock band which is a bit loud for the, those instruments. Well, you see, we started after May 68 in Paris, which was a date for uh, emancipation, kind of freedom, you know, general freedom. And uh, I met David Allen, and David Allen had just quitted the soft machine, and um, he had plenty of nice songs, but he was also interested in playing free jazz and jazz and um, oriental music and to do a melting of this. So I was more of a jazz man and there were rock people in the, like a drummer and the bass uh, um, and David with electric guitar and Jilly Smith with a, um, her strange vocals. We tried to do something uh, uh, quite um, uh, spiritual and which would be a kind of uh, relation with um, the planet Gong. The planet Gong um, was inhabited by two sort of people, the octave doctors and the potted pixies. And they were, those the people were kind of communicating with uh, Tibet and with some station in Tibet and all that uh, of the story that was pictured by uh, David Allen really and um, we were living together as a band and um, so we tried to create music uh, original with um, influences as I told you influences of rock uh, of singing um, songs and uh, also jazz and uh, some cosmic aspect was brought in by Tim Blake with his synthesizers so we could uh, venture into um, some sort of kind of cosmic feeling uh, and all that was a, a, a melting sort of thing and eventually we created the gong style of music and uh, we've done uh, many records The first one was just David Allen record called Magic Brother. That's where I met him. And then there were the electric camembert, of course. And then the Angel's Egg and Flying Teapot, because the Flying Teapot was very important with Gong. Well, that was the fantasy of David, really. But we all were tuned up with that fantasy and we, we played some of the stuff that we thought would correspond to this idea of Gong. And then um, the, probably the, the epic, you know, the apex, the, the peak of that uh, um, style was the album called You. And then um, that was the proper gong with David Allen and, and um, Stevie Lage. And, and then when David Allen left, uh, the, the, gong was, uh, the gong name was used uh, in a total different way by Pierre Merlin, mm -hmm. they were taking the, the gong as an instrument. Yeah. And uh, so they were playing metallophones, you know, like my, uh, vibraphone and things like, um, like that. And we tried also that something different, purely musical, without the mythology of David, because David wasn't there anymore. And actually, in 2019, uh, the gong band is still carrying on. David uh, died a couple of years ago. Um, I'm still there, but I don't play any rock music really, and I don't play gong. And so, but there is still a group called Gong, which uh, which is composed with the uh, the people that were playing with David just before he died. Okay. Um, and they've bought, they've done an album, and they asked me to participate on on Duduk. Because um, I I don't play tenor saxophone or any rock style anymore, and uh, so I, on Duduk I participated to that band, um, and that's what David wanted. You see, it's a continuation of the Gong Band. Con quale strumento hai iniziato a suonare nei Gong e come si è evoluta la tua storia musicale nel tempo? Well. I started my musical life when I was 14 years old on saxophone. And then I went to India uh, around when I was 20 years old and I, I started to play bamboo flute. 
and be interested in India's Indian style of music, although my roots were more into the jazz fields you know, as a saxophone player. But then when I played with gong, I played mostly tenor saxophone, even electric saxophone at a point, and, and flute, and I was still playing bamboo flute. Yeah. They, they have a piece in the Shamal album that's called Bambuji, and that relates the, um, the bamboo as a symbol of the sun. Yeah. Uh, starting with Japan and then me, and then India, Middle East, and then um, East uh, Europe, and then finally uh, Amer South American style. That all are all they all played on on, on primarily the same bamboo flute. So I, I was stuck to this idea, and in the, about at the end of the nineties. I encountered, you know, I was amazed by the sound of the duduk, Armenian duduk. So I play, I started to play a lot of Armenian duduk, and we've done several records, about nine records now with, with that group called Haduk, when I play um, mostly duduk, and I went in, Ar in Armenia, because this is an Armenian uh, instrument, I went several times in Armenia to play with Jivan Gasparian and Armenian masters of that instrument. And um, I added many other instruments that are not very much played, but that are very interesting. That uh, Chinese Bau and Huluzi flutes. <laughs> and then um, some instruments from Bali, kind of flute from Bali, and also from Laos. Yeah. From Laos, the mouth organ from Laos, I played a lot. So I played odd instruments now which have, have not much sound, you see, so it's difficult to mix it with a rock band properly, um, apart from recording. In recording, that's about possible, but on stage, it's a bit difficult. And now um, I'm, I play um, in solo, in duets, uh, in trio, in, in for adu quartet, you know, adu, adu quatuor. And um, I don't play much saxophone. I play uh, mostly those instruments, which are very, original and they are, it's interesting to play new instruments for Europeans that don't know that those instruments. And so that's why um, also I stopped playing with gong in the, after the 90s. And um, because gong is a, more a rock band, I'll yeah. say, you know, progressive or psychedelic as you like. But it's still, you know, it's a, still a rock band which is a bit loud for the, those instruments. So now when I play with a drum, it's a small drum, <laughs> and it's uh, less, less sound, less volume of sound. Well, I, I find my way this way. Thank you. Mm.